Hello there. Long time no see. This is Welsh ASMR82. Hey, how are you doing? So in today's video, which is part two of this series, and I know lots of you enjoyed part one, we're going to look at this lowly planet guide of Scandinavia. Well, it should really be Scandinavia and the Nordics because it includes Finland, but also Faroe Islands and Iceland, as well as Norway, Sweden and Denmark. We're not going to look at all of those like we did last time. I'm just going to dip in. I just opened it on this page. Should we start there? We'll start with Finland. I'll definitely try and do one from Sweden and one from Denmark today as well. I really hope you like the video and find it relaxing as well as a little bit informative. Okay, so beyond Saimaa Lakeland, explore Salpausilka Geoparks Ice Age Marvels. Or get curious over arts and sports in Lahti, Finland's leading green city. Top tip, Saima Lakeland is surrounded by the Karelian wilderness in the east and vast expanses of dense, dense woodlands in the north. Lahti in the southwest gives a taste of urban lifestyle among Finland's signature lakes and forests. So it looks like that's the coastline there, southern Finland. We have Lahti here in Saima there. And this picture I found particularly attractive. How beautiful is that? It's a ski jump in Lahti. That would be a bit too scary for me. The strap of land between Saima Lakeland and Helsinki is a great part of southern Finland to explore. As with everywhere in the south, the landscape is dominated by forests and lakes. Here the main water is called Payanne, surrounded by the recently anointed Selpausilka Geopark. The region's main city, Lahti, is also unsurprisingly Finland's leading city in sustainability. This is an area for adventure sports lovers, with three ski jump towers and plenty, plenty of cross-country tracks. Lahti is also known for its winter sports, but it's not all about wintry fun here. In summer, rock climbing, kayaking, and cycling around the surrounding Karelian landscape are sure to keep you busy. And then we've got Hanko, which is near Rasebo. Cruise along the coast and discover a string of tiny villages and their treasures, from medieval buildings to modern artisanship. Talking about beautiful buildings, wow, that's stunning, isn't it? Midway between Turku and Helsinki, 55 kilometers from Hanko, Fiskash is a charmingly, charming factory village to finish creative hub. Brick neoclassical buildings house studios, galleries, and showrooms for cutting edge design. More than 100 artisan designers, or artisans, designers, and artists live and all work here. And there's lots to stroll about and discover. Nearby Rasibo, oh, is. Okay. Rasibo is home to the seaside resort of one of Finland's oldest towns. It's an ideal base for exploring Ekenas Archipelago National Park by boat or kayak, as well as the evocative ruins of Rasibo Castle. In 2009, Ekenas emerged with the nearby towns of Karis and Pohya under the official name of the municipality Rasibo, although all names are still used. If you're from Helsinki or if you've visited Finland and been to any of these places we're looking at today, do let me know in the comment section. They sound lovely. Okay, last one. Rauma. 
Rauma preserves the imprint of the past like few other places in Finland. Its charming old quarter, Vanha Rauma, has World Heritage Listing as an outstanding example of a Nordic wooden city. Mm. Through, uh, though Rauma got its charter in 1442, it burned down twice in the 17th century. So the old town mostly dates from the 18th and 19th centuries, when Rauma became one of Finland's biggest trading ports. You can see it there on the coast. This is Sweden. It's the, the Bay of Bothnia. This there, and there's Helsinki. The making of fine lace also plays a big part in the Rauma story in the early 19th century. Almost all Rauma women engaged in it. The city has since spread far beyond its old confines. But Vanha Rauma remains the lively hub of town life, with more than 100 shops, restaurants and cafes. The largest and most atmospheric of a few old wooden towns on Finland's west coast. It also has a base for some excellent mainland and island excursions. You can see a map of it here. Pyhän Ristin Kirko. I'm guessing Kirko is a church. Vanha Ratihone. Marella and Rauman Taide Museo. Tammella. The Kauppa Tori. I guess that's the main square. Kauppa, Kauppa Tori. Okay, let's go to Sweden next. Big cities. Ah, Visby, beyond Visby. That's interesting. So, this is the east coast of Sweden. Visby is on the island over here. Some of Sweden's most pristine sands, plus urban mainland cities and another vast windswept island besides Gotland, lie beyond Visby. Between Visby and the extreme north of Gotland, picture-perfect farmland covers most of the island. Look at that, how pretty is it? All the way up to, is it Foro? Foro, separated from Gotland proper by a small strait traversed by a free ferry. Foro is home to fine beaches and scenic fishing villages. Carrying on in serene isolation along the Baltic Sea from Gotland sits the culturally rich island of Öland. Beyond southeastern Sweden is an enchanting land, deeply rooted in Scandinavian law, home to medieval and Renaissance castles in Vard, Stena and Kalmar, ethereal forests, the industrial grit of Nor Sherping the heritage glass-blowing villages of the Glasrikat and the modern engineering marvel of the Goethe Canal that connects the North Sea with the Baltic. It's this top tip, visit during the summer months for ease of ferry crossings and to make the most of the wilds of Gotland and Öland. Chasing the sun in northern Gotland, you'll find some of the province's most secluded coves and white sandy stretches on the island of Foro, reached via a free car ferry every 30 minutes from Foresund, in the island's northeastern corner. Sudershand is one of Sweden's top five beaches, with excellent camping, restaurants and SUP rentals. Secluded uh, Ore Park at 
the 1847 Thay of Water Lighthouse and Walk, 600 meters north along the shoreline. At Ekaviken Badplatz, 5k west of Norsta Ore, a bay yields to a stretch of white sand near the fishing village of Ekaviken. Fore is also home to magnificent Raukar rock stacks. See them at sunset at Lang Hammars Hammaren, a 30 minute drive from Ekaviken if you can. I guess these are them. They are pretty beautiful. They'd be more in keeping in like a desert somewhere, wouldn't they? Look like something from the Arizona or something. Being Borgholm, Boriholm, ruined castles, royal palaces on the island of Öland, colourful Borgholm oozes Nordic magnetism, dramatic Borgholm slot. Northern Europe's largest ruined castle dates to at least 1281 and is remarkably well preserved. Preserved. Soliden Pal Palace, 850 metres southwest of the castle, is still used by the Swedish royal family as a summer home. Castles and Kronan in Kalmar. Storybook castles, shipwrecked treasures. The turrets of the magnificent 12th century Kalmar slot, similar we've looked at on a video previously on this channel, are visible as you take the 6k long Ulon Bridge across the Kalmar Strait towards Kalmar. An easy 40 minute drive from Borholm. Explore the castle's opulent interiors. Enjoy lunch on the little island of Varvsholmen, where the 130 kroner daily specials at Slipkayen will leave you wondering how food this good could be this cheap. Peruse the wonderfully preserved finds from sunken 17th century flagship Kronan at the Kalmar Lenz Museum by the harbour. The ship was rediscovered in 18, 1980 and more than 30,000 items have been retrieved so far, including a spectacular gold hoard. Wow. The Kingdom of Crystal, starting near Nubro, a 35 minute drive west of Uland. Routes 25, 28 and 31 form a convenient oval for visiting the glass blowing factories and workshops of Sweden's glass at the Kingdom of Crystal. Orenas Glassbruk in the village of Orefors is the best place to observe masters at work. Costa Glassworks is the most touristy but its gallery, glass blowing demonstrations and stunning Costa Border Art Hotel make it a worthwhile stop. The glass factory houses Scandinavia's largest collection of art glass, more than 40,000 pieces, plus an astonishing repository of historical glass by famed artists. Okay, let's do Denmark then, which I think is at the beginning of this book. Obviously that's Copenhagen, but we're not going to go there. We should do Moon. Moon's Clint, apparently. For many Danes, the island of Moon is synonymous with Moon's Clint, Denmark's tallest series of limestone cliffs, rising to an impressive 126 metres. It is really tall, isn't it? They're topped with lovely beech woods and in nearby meadows, rare orchids bloom in spring. The closest settlement to the cliffs is Clintholm Hound a marina village which has some unexpectedly attractive beaches with within walking distance of its small fishing port. The island's main hub and appealing little capital is Steyr, which during the Middle Ages was one of Denmark's wealthiest provincial towns, thanks to its lucrative herring industry, home to art studios, cute side streets like Fauerstrade, and the brewery, Brughuse Morn, it's an enjoyable place to meander around. In the villages of Elmelun, Kelmu and Fanfiu, 
the churches are adorned with medieval murals, and if you wind your way further west through pretty undulating terrain, you'll pass several intriguing 5,000-year-old tunnel graves. So the Mons Clint is over here in the eastern part. And then Ceylon is here, this island. So it connects Ulfesun. It's the, yeah, it's the clamoring for cliffs. <laughs> There's a picture of Mons at night. From the main car park, it's roughly a 10 minute walk. It's Denmark's famous white cliffs, Moons Clint. The epicentre of the area is Moon's Geocentre, giving hands-on accessible explanations of the cliff's formation for children and adults alike. Walk through millions of years of geological evolution with wall animations of primordial forests and dinosaur-era underwater predators. Stop thunderbolt fossils. Spot. Dinosaur feather fluff in amber. Feather fluff, it's difficult to say, feather fluff. The most exciting of the VR experiences. Oh, this is fun. Mysterious Moon. Three of Moon's village churches contain cartoon-like medieval murals that once illustrated religious stories for the illiterate congregation. Through Kelbu Kirke and Elmelunne Kirke are more famous. 13th century Fanifu Kirke is arguably the most engaging. A guide sheet in English helps decipher the painted images, which date mostly from around 1500. In a field a short walk away lies Grunsale, one of Denmark's most megalithic bar barrows, oh, barrow, okay. dated back around 5,500 years. It's just two metres high, but 102 metres long, and studded with 145 FD boulders. Kong Askeshu, the biggest of Denmark's hemispherical passage graves, offers a fine view of the Zealand Bridge, and you can crouch down and get into the T-shaped chamber. No, thank you. Getting inside, clicking a hui, requires crawling. Definitely not. I'm claustrophobic. But inside, there are still grave goods protected by plexiglass. Medieval mural in the Fjadafu. Oh, how interesting. Turn out the lights. The world has 44 dark sky parks, but Moon, with nearby Nuor, is the first to be named a dark city community, a place where people consciously live with reduced light pollution. Moon's Clint is one of the best places in mainland Denmark to gaze in wonder at the galaxy-filled night sky and watch for shooting stars. How romantic. Though distant town lights make the effect a little less pristine at New York, um, that one hamlet island is well worth visiting for its lovable little old world farmhouses, a few of which act as rustic B&Bs. There's also an excellent bird watching spot with a free to use hide raised above the marshy flats that flank the causeway from Mürn. That was very interesting. I will continue to do this series, and I'll drop in some from Iceland and Norway and Faroe Islands as well. But thanks for tuning in for this little episode. I wanted to get a video out of this channel, so I haven't done one in ages. So, thank you so much for watching. watching. Kitos, tak. And if you would like to see more, then click like. Drop me a comment. Tell me if you've been to any of these places, or if you live there. Wow, I'd love to know if you live there. And if you really love what I do, then don't forget to subscribe to my Maps channel, first and foremost. And then maybe head on over to Patreon, information below, and see if you want to support me on Patreon as well. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. 
Take care and I'll see you again really soon. Good night.